I think we both imagine probably being in plays together, <laughs> but not yeah. that she would create this show and that I would get to play a part like this. No, not, you know, not in your wildest dreams. The show is different from the book. So people who read the book will have some nice surprises for them as well. Not that you would skip the show because you know everything that happens in the book, but in case someone thinks that way, there's lots of different things that um, happen in the show than the book. It's like a companion piece. They're, they're sort of, you know, different points of view. Like the book is more um, through Jules's point of view and very interior, we're very inside her head. So it's, it's a different um, approach. And then for the series, we got to open it up and look at the show through and story through Suzanne's eyes, which was so much fun creatively to kind of crack open a whole new side of the story and, and explore it through Emily's character. Her name has no ID. Cops couldn't get a statement. It was always a hope to be able to adapt it. I mean, I loved writing the book and I loved writing, getting really interior with the characters and getting inside their heads. But the world was just so rich. And through writing it, I became really interested in Suzanne's character and um, so moving into series, I really wanted to look at why Suzanne brings May home, why she wants to help her, and how far will she go to help May. So I, I really, I also became a mother in that time between writing the book and adapting the series. So, you know, which also changed my perspective a little bit. So, so that was really fun to explore in series and then also look at the case of Eamon Town and the Detective Lopez storyline and see how Suzanne and the detective work together. Suzanne kind of getting, you know, in emotionally with May and learning things. And then Detective Lopez learning, you know, um, uh, doing, you know, sleuthing around the town and the two of them sort of putting together what they're learning. This is May. We're waiting for a foster home to open up. So she's going to stay with us. Your kindness, it's too much. You deserve it. The, the true story was heard by my uh, producer, executive producer, Rachel Miller, who brought the story to me. And I thought, oh my God, this is so good. I have to tell it. Um, and it did happen in Ohio. But to free ourselves up creatively, because it's not a documentary and it's not a biopic or anything, uh, we took the true story as inspiration and then got to open up the world and see where our characters went you know with with these stories so we we really freed ourselves up it's it's inspired by true events but we freed ourselves up creatively to see where the show goes so you have someone who is escaping a you know cult background and then then that collides with like a family drama where maybe things aren't as perfect as they seem from the outside and maybe there's some things happening already in the family and i i found it fascinating to kind of explore how fragile things can be, how fragile relationships can be, and families can be, and even our own psychology, our, our psyche can be. And so how one element can come in and change things um, in in a in a, a very impactful way, um, I found that really fascinating. And yeah, I mean, I, I, I always think it's interesting to play with tone, and I think we do, and Daria can probably speak more to that, but there's, you know, there's like some real thriller aspects to it, scary stuff, and then there's some family drama. And I think you just play it as an actor, you just play it as you're, you know, a, a person you're aware of things, you know, what needs to happen, but you have to be living in the character. But Daria can probably speak more to like how, you know, weaving the different tones together. Well, it's so interesting what you said, Emily, about the, the fragility of the family, because all those little cracks are there in the pilot, those those little cracks between the characters. And then May comes in and just, you know, her presence shines a light on all these cracks and they become chasms, you know, and they're all sort of floating away from each other um, in a really sad and beautiful and human way, you know. And um, in terms of tone, I mean, I come from playwriting and theater, so I always approach storytelling through character and dialogue and behavior and psychology. So 
I've worked in a lot of different mediums and it's always it's always about the character and, and the psychology and that how that drives plot and story. And in this, you know, it's a family drama under the suspense horror thriller microscope. You know, it's those everyday moments, but when you, you know, when the camera slowly moves down the hallway, it becomes a horror moment, you know, but it's a girl in her room, right? Like, so it's both things. It's sort of putting the the family dynamics and, and disconnects. You know, if you look at a character like Jules, she's just having a coming of age story essentially, but under the horror microscope, there's this girl that's, literally displacing her and stealing her mother. So it kind of turns up the dial on everything dramatically. You brought her home with you? I couldn't abandon her. She's been through so much trauma. It's important that May feel safe here. I, I think it's really interesting because especially the character of Suzanne and May have some parallels with um, trauma they've experienced. Um, I, I really love the way the show and Daria approach the trauma and, um, you know, is really authentically, you know, explored. And um, that's one thing that drew me to the story. And in terms of as, I, as an actor preparing, you know, I work from bottom up and or from the beginning, like thinking of the character's um, history. And so it was really helpful to have that information. And we had the scripts ahead of time, which I would always <laughs> hound Daria. And they, she gave them to me like <laughs> amazingly before we start filming and everything. <laughs> and I was like, it's really helpful. I can know what's, I, mean, I knew it was gonna happen. But to really have the scripts is so helpful to know where the character goes because it really reveals things about Suzanne and her past. And so to me, they, I use that to build a history for the character and where she's coming from and her perspective. And so kind of like any other character, you're going as much. But sometimes you have to make up so much of it. And this is great makeup, still making stuff up in my mind that helps me. But I had so much material to draw from and to work with that we knew was true about Suzanne from her past. It was really helpful when building a character. It was a really great collaboration because I've done, and the writers have done a lot of work creating a really thorough character uh, and, and giving Emily as much information as we had and all our you know stories, some that ended up in the show and some that didn't, but just sharing all this info with her so she could build off of it. You know, Emily also did her own work as an actor to be, to fill out the the rest of the role. And I remember she told us, Emily, you talked about Suzanne liking horses when oh, she yeah. was little. You know, so we used that piece, um, um, you know, threaded throughout. Everything's very woven in the story. Um, the, the images and it kind of speaks to what, um, you were asking about Lauren in terms of trauma and that trauma is generational. Things get passed down. The way that, you know, Suzanne's mother was affected Suzanne, affects her daughters, you know, and it um, takes a lot of work and attention um, to, to work with it and make sure that it's not, you know, continuing to play out in harmful ways. Um, and so that's something we definitely, there are, you know, played with throughout the series. There are even sort of some visual echoes of, um, you know, young Suzanne and Jules. And, you know, um, so we really tried to, I, I looked at the series as, a, as an eight part movie and all the pieces, uh, an important part of a whole, like almost like a tapestry weaving together all these Easter eggs and storylines and, and um, emotional storylines, and um, and then you kind of stand back at the end and see it as this tapestry all woven together as one big picture. The Amon County case. The sheriff said they didn't find anything. Do you remember seeing anything having to do with satanic worship? What do you think it means? It's a cult. Everything's changed. I love the exploration and the therapy. Um, I found it so fascinating. I, I like exploring to somebody who is in um, mental health herself and still has struggles with mental health issues. And 
Um, I think that can be common. And I think, you know, Suzanne was kind of thinking, oh, I've dealt with this and I'm good. And, you know, thinking she was fine and not really aware of certain, of, of not really processing her trauma. No one ever leaves except your girl, who, guessing by the way they've marked her, is vital to them. I think May has something to do with it. She needs to leave. You would never betray me, would you, Suzanne? May? It's creepy stuff. Uh, you know, my writer's room and I researched so many organizations and cults and groups and read books and interviewed people and watched documentaries. And we just, we absorbed a lot of information and details. And we decided to make our own cult. I mean, we made, we built all the detail of the cult, um, all of their ideology. We made it up and their history, um, but we wrote like a huge document that we gave to all of our heads of departments, our costume designer, our set designer. When we um, we have some bespoke music in the uh, in the in the piece, the hymn that our composer wrote, the song at the end by Isabella Summers, the Bishop Briggs main title song, and we gave them you know the Morning Star and the Dawn A. We gave us all this language from the well, we even wrote part of the Book of Covenants there. Bible and we wrote like Bible stories because we really wanted it to, even though it is fictional, we wanted it to feel real and specific. And so we put a lot of um, thought and effort into making something unique and grounded and that we hadn't seen exactly before because there is a lot of content about and there's a lot of cults so <laughs> i think specifically the devil aspect like i'm someone who does not believe in the devil necessarily i mean there are people doing evil things but just the concept of people worshiping something like that is a creepy idea and you can't help it even though i'm like such a i mean really it's the human beings that are just not a supernatural thing human beings are just you know that's disturbing that people would do that but um that idea but you can't, there's a, there's certain elements like sometimes being on set you'd be like oh this is this is kind of creepy even though you're not like i don't believe any of this is real but you can't help feeling a bit creeped out at times by the subject matter